Should I put on uh, some crowd noise and pump in some crowd yeah, noise? Yeah, you should. Do some, yeah, do some fake crowd noise. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll go ahead and get started. I'm um, I'm so excited to have all of you here with us today for, for our um, Adrenaline Sports Behind the Scenes, uh, where we are going to chat about a project that we're so excited about um, with the University of Minnesota Duluth, Bulldog Country, and uh, their, their hockey video that we were able to partner with. Um, I'm Jolene Letcher. I'm CEO of uh, Mud Mile Communications and then um, what many are you, of you are familiar with, Adrenaline Sports, which is our sports marketing division, um, where we work with incredible partners uh, all across the country to really tell amazing stories and to help them overcome uh, some of those challenges, of course, that they may face as well when it comes to storytelling and recruiting and fan engagement um, and how do we do that through technology and content and, and doing that in a very strategic way. Today, I'm excited. We have, um, have two folks joining us that are going to be part of our panel. Kevin Perlick, who is um, our senior animator editor with um, Adrenaline Sports. And then we have Brian, um, Brian Nystrom, who is, I keep saying new dad is what one of my defaults is. I know that <laughs> Brian is not normally your title. <laughs> Um, but both Brian and Kevin are going to, to chat with us about this project. And as you have questions throughout our conversation, we want this to be free flowing. So feel free to just um, virtually raise your hand, um, either message or put it in the group chat, whatever works best for you. Um, first though, I would, would love for both um, Kevin and Brian to just give us a little bit of background for both of you. Kevin, I'll start with you. Um, you know, I know you've, you've been with our team for a couple of years now, but before that, that, um, tell us, uh, tell us what your backgrounds in. Yeah, well, my um, career, uh, gosh, twenty some years ago now, started in sports. Um, I started uh, still in college, and I was doing fan engagement type stuff for the old dot matrix boards um, for the Cleveland Cavaliers, and I was working in video coaching with the Cleveland Indians. Um, and then from there, I moved to New York to work with the Knicks and Rangers. Then decided, go back to Cleveland, go back to the Cavs, go back to the Indians. And then I got out of sports for a number of years. Um, and then once I started working with these guys, you know, we both had background sports, but, you know, Nate as well. And we both found that we really enjoyed it, but, you know, we didn't really talk about it much. And then some opportunities kind of came up and we both were geeking out on it and, we had so much fun with it that we started the conversations of why don't we just start adding this to our repertoire of things that we do and um and it's been a blast i just love it awesome well i know we're we're so fortunate to have you with us we pick on kevin all the time so i'm sure you all will get um several several jokes um already you may or may not get it. or if you want to throw some at him in the chat yeah. that's fine with us too Absolutely. we're good with it <laughs> All right, Brian, so we're really excited because um, from our Adrenaline Sports partners, you all um, came to us in quite a year. Uh, but first, before we talk about what, um, what challenge you presented us with, tell us a little bit about yourself and your background. Yeah, so um, Brian Nystrom uh, with the University of Minnesota Duluth. And I, my title definitely feels like a new dad because that's what I've been for the last three months. But um, official title is Assistant Athletic Director of Marketing and Corporate Relations. And I've been at UMD now for 10 years. And uh, I'm from the Midwest originally, um, got my start in the sports industry in some minor league uh, capacity, as well as um, Illinois State University. And then uh, it's interesting, I'm back, at, obviously, at a Division One hockey school, um, which is kind of uh, our main uh, priority here at UMD. And uh, I got my start in minor league hockey, so uh, on the AHL side of things. So it's interesting, my first start in sports um, was in hockey, and then uh, eventually came full circle back to, back to UMD with our hockey programs here. And it was uh, an awesome project to be a part of them, and, and excited to uh, talk about it a little bit and hear from Kevin as well. So you all came to us. This, of course, year is unique in um, many, many ways. But Brian, take me through the, the challenge that you all were facing um, when you came to us and said, how can you help us? Yeah, no, absolutely. And as you said, this year is unique in a number of different ways. And starting back in March with obviously the COVID and the pandemic and how that's changed the landscape of 
of college athletics in general. And so um, as we went through the summer, uh, we started to work with our men's hockey program and, and a few things came up with some restrictions on re recruiting and, and travel. And how do we tell our story uh, from our coaches and our programs and how do you recruit in a new virtual world? And uh, so they came to us from a marketing team and said, you know, what can you guys do? Um, how, how can we help from a video standpoint and a storytelling standpoint? And, um, you know, we're a little smaller staff. So, uh, you know, we had little bits and pieces here and there to tell our story over the years, but nothing that was really impactful uh, that it could be told in a short period of time from the success that we've had, not only um, from the team, but also, what Duluth had to offer, what the university had to offer. So trying to put all those together uh, was, you know, a little too much um, that we could handle for internally. So reaching out to you all uh, from the work that we'd seen you done with many of our partners in SIC was a great opportunity to uh, try to tell that story and uh, really capture the attention of these young kids that uh, we're trying to recruit to UMD. And I know from our end, when we started working on a strategy for this, one of the challenges was, um, how do you make something somewhere seem fun and awesome and exciting if you're 17 or 18 years old when, for the most part, we can't show people um, outside of really archive video or, or still photos? And I think that was one of the big discussions we had was also how do you tell the story of Duluth itself? And, um, you know, Brian, how much does that mean to you in, in that part of your recruiting process? Like, this is who we are, not only as a team, but as this community. Yeah, it's, it's one of the staples and pillars, uh, not just in our hockey program, but all our programs in general. Um, it's the Duluth community. It's northern Minnesota. It's the uniqueness of that uh, that we really try to hammer home. It's Lake Superior, uh, you know, the world's largest lake sitting right next to our hockey rink. And when you come into town, you see it. And, and really using uh, the community that supports, you know, Bulldog Athletics and Bulldog Country as a whole, uh, the amount of support from our season ticket holders to a full packed arena to the students, um, we're really fortunate with the support we have and to try to show that um, to these kids that are wanting to come to UMD at a great university in a great town um, and our athletic programs have shown greatness on top of that is, is extremely important to us. So trying to highlight that and, and the unique things that Duluth has to offer, uh, I think is almost sometimes more instrumental than just um, some of the stuff on ice because it's there's a lot more that goes on than just coming to school, being a student athlete and playing in the hockey program. Uh, it's the connection to the community and the school um, that they're going to remember for a long time after they're uh, graduated from here. I think there is a, uh, well, the best word I can think of is there is almost a, like a natural majesty when you're up in Duluth, just how beautiful everything is from, um, you know, being off campus and just everything that's there too. And, and for us, part of it was the challenge of how do you tell the breadth of that? And of course, you'll see when we take a look at the video here in just a minute, um, how we really try to utilize aerials to just give kind of a scope of that as well. Now, Brian, I do have a quick surprise for you. I don't, I don't know if you're a surprise person or not. I don't know, I'm nervous now. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have not had a chance to tell you because we just found out, um, and I will let everybody know here uh, before we play the video, but this video was just awarded an International W3 Award. Um, so out of more than 12,000, entries from really across the globe from some of the biggest brands and teams that you can think of. Um, this was selected as among the best in the world um, for uh, athletic storytelling at the collegiate level. Awesome. So thank you. Congratulations. Awesome. We'll just we, add, uh, a, add, a, add another trophy to the hockey, add another hockey trophy program. You know, that's all that, they've been right? doing lately. So. <laughs> <laughs> this one probably goes in front of the national championship, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, right, there, right there. Yeah, it might. I think it's a little bit smaller than that. <laughs> yeah, probably. Uh, but we are super excited to be able to, to tell you that um, as well, kind of in person, right? So now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually take a minute and um, we're going to watch the video that we created. Welcome to Bulldog Country, the state of hockey, home to the nation's superior program, three national championships, six Hobie Bakers, and dozens of NHLers. It all starts here, where we develop greatness along the shores of the greatest lake. Oh. 
Duluth, Minnesota. Home to the University of Minnesota Duluth. Outdoor Magazine's best town ever. 178 miles of hiking trails and dozens of hotels and restaurants within walking distance of Amsoil Arena. Amsoil Arena, named the best college hockey arena in the country by Stadium Journey. A party every night featuring 15 luxury suites and home to the three-time national champions. Six Hobie Baker winners. Five straight NCAA tournament appearances. Three consecutive title games. And 16 NHL contracts in the last five years. Um, so, Kevin, we'll hand it over to you. That was so total, it was about a three minute video. Mm -hmm. um, I want you to take us through some of your favorite parts. In putting that together well my ultimate favorite part was a part that almost never made it into the video and that was um having fun at the expense of a, an opponent getting smashed into the boards um and so I was working on it and nate had this idea of wanting to have this something with um, you know lake superior and the crashing waves and maybe a player getting checked or had this idea of, of what maybe we could do with it. And um, when they went out to, you know, out there to shoot, it was of course calm and didn't have the crashing waves that we had hoped for. Um, so did a little digging on YouTube and found a guy who did have some great stuff and we contacted him and um, bought a couple of shots from him. And then it was this sort of game of, okay, I've got these shots of people, guys getting checked. It was a few shots of, of that. And then I've got this great, wave crashing things and it's like how do i bring them together sort of you know like chocolate and peanut butter and um that's when the fun started and i started cutting the players out and putting them in the water and see if i could make the whole thing work and and for quite a while it, it just wasn't working i was not getting it to look the way i wanted it to look and then i started thinking like well maybe it's not something they would maybe they wouldn't be into it or maybe it's i don't know I don't want to say poor taste, but I thought, you know, I, did, I didn't know sort of the, the ins and outs of how some of the rivalry stuff works and what people will be willing to show or not show. So I kind of shelved and moved on to the rest of the video. And then at one point I like, told Nate about what I was working on. He's like, well, let me see it. And I showed it to him and he's like, that is going in the video. If they don't like it, we'll take it out, but they've got to at least get a chance to see it. So get back to it and, you know, try to figure out how to make it, make it work. And so that's kind of what I'm gonna go through here a little bit is um, is that little sequence. And then there's a couple other favorite parts too. Of, you know, um, there's a shot of the bridge um, coming into, uh, I haven't been out there, so I'm not really sure where the, the, the bridge in relationship to everything is. But I'm like, huh, the bridge sort of looks like a goal. If I cut a goalie out and throw him in front of there on the, on the water, then the trick was figuring out how to marry those shots together and get that to work. And, once you get a couple of those things laid out, then you start getting a flow of like, okay, well, this technique is cool. What other things can I do to sort of round out the video with it? Um, and then of course, there's just some basic editing and other little pieces to, to add into the entire show. And of course, when we were up there, you know, Brian, you're probably going to speak to, oh, you guys had the one super calm day ever. <laughs> It was perfect for you guys when you showed up. It was like the typical, it's like this every day, even in the winter. <laughs> it was the, and we were like, we need this crashing, crashing wave video. So if anybody knows Sparky, that um, he's got some great stuff on YouTube. Um, he's uh, is, is the guy that we got the um, that really awesome crashing shot from because it just didn't time out on our end. We got the perfectly beautiful weather, but we needed a little bit more oomph to it, so. Kevin, keep taking this through. Okay, should I do a, should I share the screen here? Yeah. See if I can Let's do that. Looks like I, okay. So do you, you see it? Is it up there? You see it. Yeah, we can see it, Kevin, yep. 
Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna play through and see if it if it plays through smoothly, so you can kind of get a just a sense of the. So here is our, gosh, what is it? Like two or three seconds of, of action that took uh, took a bit to figure out, but was really rewarding once we did. Um, so, so to take us a little bit through how we got to this point. We're gonna dive into a, another layer here. Okay, so so what we've got is our guy who is skating, skating in, and then he gets checked into the rocks. Well, the, the original shot, you don't see the guy coming in to check him until he's on him. And so when you take the, the scene out of context and put it in the water, um, you know, in the regular shot, you get a sense of what's around him. And so when the check happens, it makes perfect sense. But when you don't have your typical surroundings here and you don't see the guy until it's he's he's on him it wasn't uh, it wasn't working you were losing a sense of what's going on so i had to find something another way to do it and so what i found was another shot i'm not even sure if it was the same game um of this guy and these are these are two stills there's that still and then there's a still where he moves a little bit to change his you know, when he's changing his action. And you'll see this is number 10. And so I was able to, in space, like cut them both out, put them where I needed to in the water, and then in sort of 3D space, manipulated their movement so that they lined up and matched up where they needed to get to, to have this spectacular hit happen. And so we've got him kind of moving into here, where he checks him. And then a couple frames later, you'll see, oh, wait a minute, it's number 26. So when it's playing real time, you don't even see it, but it's actually two different players from, I think two different games, um, was kind of the key to making this, this thing work so that you get the sense of this guy coming up to hit him and then crash him into the, into the rocks. And so that was the, the hardest part of this scene. The, the other part to sell it was to make them feel like they're in the water. So I was trying to find a part of the shot where as he's skating in, where it almost you get the sense that he's causing uh, the waves or he's, he's actually in the wave as it's moving and getting the sense that they're in the water. Um, and one thing that really helped me on this is all that mist in the water helped the fact that there was no real way to key these guys out. It was frame by frame, kind of masking them out and you couldn't, you couldn't get a perfectly clean mask. So in these frame by frames, you can see some halos around them and you know, it's not a super clean cut up, but when you play it back in real time, you don't see any of that stuff. Maybe you do, but uh, your eyes might be better than mine. Um, and then the crash of, so of course it was timing this thing of, okay, so we've got this guy, He's skating in, he's in the water. And then to get him to the point where he hits and all that water happens, I had to do a cut because it didn't, this, the shot just didn't happen that way. So we cut, zoomed in, and then let him smash into the, to the boards and the rocks and then have the water kind of overtake him. Um, so the stuff that I used to make this, there's basically no real effects on here. It's all stuff in After Effects, it's masks, and you know probably there's a little bit of keying some color correction um and just kind of moving things around sometimes frame by frame cutting some stills out to you know to get that sense of motion forward but there's you know that's basically it so your basic after effects package you have the ability to to do something like this if it's something you're going for brian what did you all think when you saw that shot one, I, I'm, I'm, it's interesting to listen to how he did it because I was like, how did, he, how did he put that together? That's, that's pretty slick. So I, I loved it. The impactful shot of, you know, and against one of our rivals in there and using the check and the waves of Lake Superior. I mean, it was, 
it fit pretty good. And it's amazing how much work goes into just, you know, two to three second clip um, that, that can be pretty impactful. But um, that was definitely a, a standout piece for us when we saw it right away uh, during, during the video. Cool. And on our end, we were super excited when you, you were like, hey guys, I'm playing with this, take a look. And we're like, wow, what? Yeah, it was just wasn't, I wasn't feeling it until I, it, until I got that other, you know, the other guy in there to get those. And it's, let's see, one, two, it's a, he's in there for maybe six frames, but it was enough to sell that he's coming in to, to hit him. Um, so that those six frames to me made, was a make or break for the, for it working. And uh, I think it made it work myself. Um, so that was, that was my favorite one. Um, but there were, there were others. Um, let's see. So the, another one that was really fun to do is our, our, our early morning jogger who, let's see if I can, oops, let's turn off one other layer. Use this one. And Kevin, as you're pulling that up, um, you know, I think just to kind of think about, you know, we talk about how do we do shoots that are safe in, you know, in today's world of COVID and socially distant. And um, so clearly in that shot, we were very safely socially distanced. Um, but yet, how do you, how do you bring people? How do you bring motion, um, you know, which conveys so much feeling for the viewer? Um, and so I think this is an interesting question that from our end, from being storytellers, uh, is how do you modify in this new world and create energy when you don't have people? How do you put motion where, where some of those natural things may not exist? And, and in this case, I think with the surround, um, you know, really the bulldog story, which is, you know, the environment also captured a lot of that emotion and that energy. So Kevin, I'll let you keep going on your shot. Yeah, and I think the other thing too that is a little different with um, with a pandemic is there's not as many people out, which I, I would imagine that this is probably a pretty popular place and there's probably lots of people on there all the time. It's probably rare that you get a, a situation where you just have one runner, but I think in this case that one runner is kind of key to this, this shot, this early morning, he's out there getting after it. Um, and so at this point, I had done a few other shots where I kind of married some stills and stuff into some of the other lake shots. Um, and so that was a theme I was going for. Like, what other shots do we have where I could do something like that? And then I came across this shot. I'm like, man, I'd love this shot. Just this, you know, tracking shot of this, this guy out for a morning run. Like, God, oh, it'd be cool if I could make that wall he's running up against look like he's, like it's the, you know, so then uh, a stop shot of, of hockey boards and I was able to loop it and, and get it to where I can lay it in there. So then Kevin, I'm gonna it's a move. For just a second. Hey Kevin. Yeah. I know you probably know this, but I'm gonna I'm gonna pop quiz on Brian. Um, and I guess if anyone else wants to jump in on the panelist questions, does anyone know what he's wearing, what the runner's wearing? I hope he's wearing a bulldog jersey or a sweater. He or is. <laughs> no, he's got a bulldog shirt on. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd love to say like it was planned product placement and branding and all of that, but it may have just been, you know, the good Lord providing for good timing. <laughs> <laughs> right. So we've got our, our perfect scene, our perfect guy with the perfect shirt going for a run. Um, so we lay in the boards, but then we got to make it fit into the scene so that it's, you know, stuck to the wall. And so another thing that's in After Effects is you can, you can do a 3D motion track, you can track the scene, and it will find points that you can then connect things to. Um, this one was a little tricky because there's not a whole lot for it to latch onto. It typically looks for corners and um, bright objects that it can sort of detect the plane of the, the, the visual field and, you know, and, you know, kind of 
what it can latch onto. And of course, moving water, it doesn't really like that much at all because it's trying to latch on to things that keep moving. But anyway, I was able to get a couple points on the wall. And then once I was able to lay in the boards and then match it to that wall and into the motion track, I was like, man, that looks pretty cool. Looks like the boards. Then it was a point of like, well, that's not enough. We gotta, gotta do more than that. Like, wonder if I can put ice on, on the running trail. And so I found a, just a stock shot of, of a flat piece of art of a hockey rink. And this was much more difficult to get to work because there wasn't anything for it to track onto. Um, and I laid two versions of it down so that it turned more white. And But you're still able to see some of the cement through there and all the shadows and stuff that he's running on top of. Um, but with this, I had to drop it in and manually manipulate it to the point where it felt like it was on top of the cement um, because it couldn't find a tracking point to latch onto. Um, and it's easy enough to sort of get an angle and a still, but once it starts moving, um, you can kind of notice here where the blue line is and center ice. You know, as you get wider in the shot, those angles start to pivot in on themselves. Um, and you lose a sense of it here because of uh, how much I covered it up. Um, but to get that to line up where all those lines are straight, was a bit of a, a bit of a challenge because if they're not straight, once the shot starts moving, it doesn't look like it's attached to the ground. It looks like it's floating and um, and it doesn't really work. So that was the big challenge on this was to actually get it to lay down on on the path and stick there. Um, in ways that you can tell too is if you look on the back wall, you see where the the blue line is in relation to the white box. And they feel it may be drifting ever so slightly, but it feels like the relationship between those two is is staying consistent, which is what really helps sell the whole whole look. So that was a uh, that was another one that was really fun to work on. So, the, so Brian, did you guys was there any other shots in here that um, that caught your eye or you know something that those two shots were, it's funny you use those two, and I didn't know that ahead of time, were two that really stood out to me. One, because the first one was just so unique um, of the ability to use the lake. And, and this shot, uh, especially it's, you know, right down on the lake next to the lift bridge, which is iconic in Duluth. So um, using some of those shots, uh, the intro shots into the arena, um, especially on the, the day that you guys were up here shooting was uh, picture perfect to highlight. Um, uh, Duluth in general it was pretty cool and now I love it even more because the guy's got a bulldog jersey on or shirt on <laughs> well but you didn't uh you didn't plan all this you didn't yeah. like slip someone in and, and tell us like surprise I, I wish everybody in Duluth would have one of those shirts on every time people came up here <laughs> <laughs> Brian what kind of um feedback have you been getting um on you know when you when you played this um, what, what have you been hearing from folks? Yeah, they've uh, it's heard great feedback uh, from our, our athletic admin staff that we shared it with, um, our hockey staff uh, especially. And our hockey staff had a great, our assistant coaches had a great uh, role um, in idea sharing as part of this, which was key because, you know, from a marketing standpoint, um, you know, we know what story we want to tell. But uh, the hockey coaches in the program specifically, um, that's their baby. They know the direction and their recruiting pitch to these kids and what they've been talking with them for, you know, the last number of years. So try to get their feedback to, to, to highlight these areas of Duluth. And then, you know, the championships, OB Baker winners, the NCAA tournaments, the NHL players, um, getting bits and pieces from them. Um, and then being able to share it with recruits and these, you know, 16 to, to 20 year olds, uh, we've heard really positive feedback and uh, to be able to fit every single piece that we want to in a three and a half minute video is really hard uh, because there's so much to tell, but uh, you guys did a great job of, of, you know, bringing it back down in that, that short storytelling feature, because a lot of times nowadays, nobody wants to sit through a 10 or 20 minute video. Sometimes it's about that quick storytelling, hitting all aspects of our program and um, our recruiting philosophy and those pillars. And uh, I think we accomplished that in this video. Yeah, absolutely. I think there was one thing too, you know, before we started, 
this. And I know you guys did the same thing, but we spent some time looking on other tour videos and, and what other colleges were doing. And one thing that was apparent to me was, quite honestly, that they were all pretty boring. Um, there was a, this separation of, there was a hype video that they would have, which had all the action. And then there was the tour video, which was basically, here's our facility. But I hadn't really seen, I'm sure somebody has, married the two together, um, which is- Take all the credit, the, Kevin. No one's done it. <laughs> no, nobody's done, I'm the only one. Um, was to, to marry that excitement with the tour, have some highlights, have some fun, show the facility, but then also get back to the reason we're looking at this in the first place is championship hockey. Um, and so, you know, to me, that was my sort of motivator of helping to keep the audience's attention. Um, you know, a lot of videos that we had seen were, you know, we could give you a tour of the, uh, the, the arena and it was how many seats it held and, you know, how many, the things that recruits don't particularly care about. Um, and so it was, you know, the, the intention of this thing the whole time was focused on getting kids to get excited about, um, you know, coming to Duluth or you know, if they're on the fence, give it maybe one little, little nugget of, uh, of something that helped keep them top of mind, or maybe it would help, you know, lean them back in, into UMD's direction, or maybe just left that little morsel of, of something where they saw the, sh the video and thought it was cool and, you know, helped in some small way to, to bring them, bring them in. And I think, um, you know, this, this is also one of those fun pieces for us because um, it's the first one we've been able to partner um, with, with you all on, but we always love to talk about a modular content strategy and what are your foundational elements of having a strong story arc um, across your brand and your identity. And this to me is such a strong piece in, in starting that and in knowing that, you know, the recruiting process, and, and we speak to this with um, admissions folks too, um, that we, we work with so much is that, you know, really this is not a, a one-time experience that we're, we're, we're really trying to engage um, recruits or students or however, you know, you, you look or you define that um, either from the athletics or the admission side. Um, we want to capture them, hearts and minds, um, but we know that that's a process and that's a storytelling process. And so I, I love that foundationally, this to me tells such a strong story, um, not only of, you know, who you all are um, for a hockey recruit, but just for the university as a whole. Yeah, I agree 100%. It's, it's, it's specifically for a hockey program, but if you take out some of those hockey clips, uh, it's a great storytelling for any one of our programs. So, I mean, it's, it's really a universal approach for us and, um, and we're excited to kind of begin that process with future videos and to build upon the, the foundation that you all set forth uh, in this project. And I know I mentioned it, um, you know, that we do, we have this modular content strategy. And, and so as we're going to keep working with you all, how can we take this piece and how can we parse it into other things? How can we flex your dollar in the best way possible so that, you know, you all didn't just spend money to do one video, um, but that we can use this foundationally as really, um, I think everybody's making sourdough anymore. So like the sourdough starter bread, am I completely out of touch or completely COVID uh, talking? But I love sourdough. <laughs> keep going. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, what is, what is this foundational piece? How much can we capture? And so when we were up there, you know, how much can we capture that gets to be, um, to be, to be used again and, um, and have multiple purposes as well. So we want to, of course, give all of you a chance to ask your questions um, of, of Kevin or Brian. And so please feel free to do that in the chat, um, either in the chat or in the Q and a section, um, or if you want to, uh, you know, raise your hand, um, virtually raise your hand. Uh, you are, you're welcome to do that um, as well. Brian, from, you know, from, from your standpoint, can you talk about expectations and reality? Um, you know, which I kind of tend to think of in like Instagram world, right? Um, what all had you hoped to have come out of this project and, and where do you feel like it, it really hit the mark for you? Um, and then using it as a springboard. Yeah, I think it. I, th I think our hope was really trying to compact everything that we wanted to in the video, as I mentioned, and, and working with a hockey program to try to 
you know, make sure that, you know, what they needed that was in there, but also using our expertise from the marketing side of things. And you compile that in and it's a lot. Um, and we have a lot of great footage and there's a lot of great footage of Duluth and to be able to take all that and put it into a shorter video and not miss out on anything, I think is, was really what we were looking for to tell that whole story. And I think you guys did a great job and we went back and forth and from a, you know, a client standpoint on our end to be able to see different, you know, uh, initial version. So it's not a finished product where, you know, we have some feedback that we can do on, on drafts one, draft two, draft three, and go back um, and really tweak it to, to make sure that uh, it's, it's hitting our goals and objectives as a whole, I think was great. And I think uh, the finished product shows that. I think we got about everything we wanted to in, um, and in this type of video. And I think, uh, you know, those recruits and individuals watching it can really get a full picture of what it is um, to be a part of Bulldog Country and to be a part of a really successful hockey program. Kevin, I want to want to come back around to you on, on one of the shots, um, which was that lift bridge. Yep. Shot and that you um, explained to us what you did to that. Is it the one that I have? Is this the, the one that I have up now that you're talking about? Where you turned it into a goal. A goal, yeah, this this one here. Yep. Um, yeah, it was, you know, sometimes the, the best uh, stuff happens when you're a little blurry eyed and it's late at night and you should probably go to sleep, but you are too excited about what you're working on. This was one of those moments where I was going through the footage and I was laying stuff in, like, what can I do? I don't know. And I'm like, well, hey, it looks like a goal wait a minute, I bet I can put a, uh, find some stills of, uh, of, of a goalie and, and put him in there. And so I did the same thing. I tracked the shot with the, the motion tracker. And I was able to get a plane, even though the water is really bad for tracking, there was enough stuff happening on dry land here that I was able to pick up enough points to get the plane correct. Um, and so then once I, I dropped him in, it was pretty quickly working. It was like, man, he's, he's on the water. And then it was some of the other stuff of, okay, to, to really get it to feel right, he, he would be reflecting into the water. Um, and so that was as simple as taking this image and just in 3D space, flipping him down in, straight down into the water and then changing his opacity and stuff. Um, but that, let's see, I'm not sure, let's see, is this, oh, here we go. So with that, you've got, our goalie, is this the, let's see which layer this is, that's our goalie there. Okay, here's our guy in the water. So there's a, a subtle effect on him that I think it, it does quite a bit, even though it, it doesn't seem like much. I'm going to turn it off now. So there's just him flipped down, opacity, a little color correction so that he matches the color of the water. But the water is moving and it has all these ripples in the water and he just looks like he's like on, you know, like a perfectly smooth glass, uh, like ice basically. So I wanted to bring in some of the movement of the water onto him. So there's an effect in After Effects, again, it's not, uh, a plug-in, it's right in, called displacement map. And so, and what it does, it'll take um, a scenario from a layer that, of your choosing. So in this case, I took the, uh, the red and the green from the lake. Um, I connected it to our guy, and then you displace it. And so when you displace it, boom. So you can move it, horizontally and horizontally and vertically within there. So some of him stays where it's not seeing red or green um, and the other parts move. So if you move it subtly, you get this feeling of it's reflecting in the little ripples of the water. So it's a really subtle thing, but it, I think it really helps kind of sell the shot maybe um, subconsciously. Um, I think it would stand out if I didn't have it on there and probably draw your attention to the wrong place. Uh, but the fact that it is there, I think then draws your attention to him and then the reflection just happens to be a secondary uh, part of the, the shot that helps helps to sell it. And I know one of the 
things that, you know, when it comes to the lift bridge is, and, and, and Brian, if you want to kind of speak to it as well, like this is, um, you know, this is literally on the Jersey, right? So how, we, you know, how do we draw that? We had that discussion of how do we draw that story through? Yeah, it's a lift bridge is our shoulder patch on our hockey jerseys. And um, the amount of times that we really try to use that as a focal piece and a lot of our other hype videos and intro videos in the arena, it's just, you know, folks from Duluth and that have vacationed in Duluth or know of Duluth, that's usually one of the pieces that's always being shown along with the lake. And as you see in that shot right there, it's just, um, it's great. It's, it's, it's something we wanted to have featured and how do you feature it and to use, you know, larger than life size, you know, cutouts and imagery of our players next to that, I think really hammered home the effect of, you know, the Bulldog hockey program in Duluth in general and, and its size and scope and um, it comparable to the lift bridge. I have several selfies with the lift bridge. <laughs> <laughs> you kind of got it, right? Yeah, I have um, to. Yeah, any, absolutely. anyone has any questions again, feel free to either ask, uh, ask in the chat or you can use the Q and A feature as well. Um, if you want to have any questions about how, um, you know, how we put this together or, or the process. Um, and you know, we hope for this to be just sort of a, uh, lift the curtain behind the scenes, um, so that you can kind of see how some of these projects have been put together and maybe spark some ideas um, for things that, that you can do um, as well within your programs too. I, I think and one, this, oh yeah, Kevin, go ahead. I was just gonna say, I think one key thing too is how, you know, this is truly a collaboration. Uh, like Brian was saying, we, we would pass off little works in progress so that they can see it, you know, um, it's not just, you know, we don't just shoot it and then I come hide down in my basement here, make it and hand it off. It's a, uh, it, you know, we, we all have ownership. Don't, don't. <laughs> well, in some ways, but we, you know, we all have ownership to some degree, right? And so um, we want the UMD folks to have as much ownership of it as me who sat down here and put this part of it together as a, in, compared to the, to Nate and crew who went out and shot it. And so, um, you know, if everybody gets a little input in it or, you know, it, it's your, it's their story. We're just trying to tell it the best way we can. Um, and if there's things that need to be done to help that story be better, then that's what we, we did to do it. I think there was a, a moment, um, it was toward the, the end of the project. I had showed my family and my, my wife was watching and goes, huh, there's voiceover in the beginning and there's voiceover at the end, but how come nobody's saying anything in the middle? And so I watched it a few times, like, because at this point it was, it was shorter at one time. And so as it stretched out that space in between, it's like, yeah, you know what? You're kind of right. Um, so we talked about it internally and uh, you know, one of us, uh, probably Nate got in touch with, with you guys and sort of pitched the idea of, Hey, we'd like to add a little bit something in the middle to maybe help round this thing out. What do you guys think? Um, and you guys were all for at least give it a shot. And then, so, so we did, um, uh, I'm not sure who wrote it, but we wrote up a bunch of little you know, statements that we could put in the middle and then we could keep them in or take them out as, as we needed. And I think we kept them all in uh, actually. But and Brian, I I give us the background too on that. Who is the voice? Because fans will know. Yeah, that voice is our, is our voice of the Bulldogs. So, um, from a, from a radio standpoint, so, uh, fans definitely know and can hear and it's, 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 it's great. And it, I, I agree with Kevin, it was a collaborative effort and to be able to bring stuff back and forth. And this was our first project with, with you all. It was, uh, a great to see. Um, it was smooth sailing from the start to, to have some ideas and we had a concept, but not really, we just had a bunch of ideas and for you all to take them to kind of paper and, and create that storyboard and, um, and, and really make this, you know, great video from that, uh, was a great process to be a part of. And it was for us, you know, I think we go into a project and we're super excited, but you know, reality is it was, it was new, you know, for, for both of us, um, both of our teams working together. And so it was, um, also a learning process of, you know, what does it, what does it mean to be a bulldog? What does it mean to tell that story? What are the highlights? What are the emotions? Um, you know, what, what do we need to tap into? And so um, that back and forth is also, it's really fun. And then I think too, you layer it on top of, okay, now we're doing this in 2020, which is a year no one could have planned or anticipated for. And so um, having that process of also, you know, 
who, who are you? Who are we? How does that work? Where do we tell that story? But then also, how are we nimble enough when we tell that story to adapt for what that looks like? And I think about when we started these conversations, Brian, um, I think we all were like, you know, there might be more college athletics than we actually have ended up with so far to the point this year, um, just, you know, across the entire landscape. And so how that conversation has had to be nimble and then also whatever's created has to be nimble. Yeah, I, I agree. It's, it's been unique and I have paternity leave on there in between and to, to, to still be able to communicate <laughs> and uh, to work with you all um, during the pandemic and that, I, I think that just shows to go um, kind of how detailed you all are as part of the process and uh, the communicative, you know, back and forth conversations was, was awesome. Well, I know we had a blast too. And as we're, we're kind of edging up here on the end of our time, um, before we, we formally wrap up, um, I am, would like to give you all a little bit of a preview of our um, next uh, behind the scenes that we are going to be doing. So uh, this is the second of three in a series that we have planned with our partners. Um, and all of them have been recorded. You can see the links both on YouTube. We'll email them out as well if you want to share them um, or want to go back and look at anything as well. Um, our next one, will be with uh, David Primus. I was gonna say the incomparable David Primus. Um, I don't, you know, I follow him on Twitter. So maybe that's, maybe he said something once and I decided to say that. But, um, he, with Augustana and uh, we're gonna take a look at Augie and their women's basketball video uh, that we were able to work with them on. And I'm gonna give you a little bit of a preview of that right now. So we'll be doing uh, talking to David Primus on November 17th, 3 p.m. Uh, you'll get another email on that as well, um, where it'll have the sign up. And we'll tell you, go behind the scenes of that one as well with a, um, it's actually a 360 camera that you probably saw. Some of that motion was a little bit different than, um, than a traditional camera. And we'll um, get to tell you a little bit more about the story behind that video, which also won uh, a NACMA award, which we're super, super proud of as well. Um, we always say that, you know, all these awards are amazing, but it's never, um, you know, it's, it's us and our team that really is honored to get to tell great stories. Um, and it's great stories. Brian, like what you all gave us the opportunity to share that, that really win awards. Um, and that at the heart of it, it's just, it's great teams that, that make our job so amazing and incredible as well. Um, oh, yes, Caitlin, um, you asked a question. Is there a link to view the full hockey video? Absolutely. I will get that. I will share it in the chat here um, before we wrap out. Um, and then I will also have that sent over um, in the, the email summary that comes out as well. Thank you. Um, we will do that for sure. Um, Kevin, Brian, closing thoughts, questions? I'm just ready to, to get started on the next one whatever, <laughs> whatever that may be. Yeah, absolutely. I know I appreciate uh, your guys' work on it and, and we're excited for the partnership for the future and um, kind of what next video will be out there and maybe another award in the making then. So absolutely. We love, it. Um, you know, you all, we, we always say we're the storyteller champions, but it takes, you know, it's cause we get to work with champions that, that makes it so amazing. Um, as well. So let's see. And Caitlin, I'm going to answer your question here. Um, 
So Caitlin um, and everyone else who wants to see the full link to the video, I just put it in the Q&A and I will also put it over here in the chat and then um, it will be included in the summary email with this recording as well. Um, I just want to thank everyone for, for joining us on an absolutely um, beautiful October day. Um, I'm assuming Duluth is picture perfect as always, Brian. Just like when you shot the video. Perfect. All right. Uh, well, thank you everybody for joining us. We're so appreciative of your time. Um, if you have any other questions of anything you saw that come up later, feel free to email us at powerup at givemeadrenaline.com. Um, and we look forward to seeing you on November 17th uh, with David Primus to talk all things Augustana University basketball. Thanks everyone and have a great day.